Hello. Welcome to my home. My name is Kate Chadbourne and I'm just delighted that you're here with me. Um, I'm so happy to be part of this concert series. I'm so grateful to Kurt and Eric for inviting me. I'm grateful to the wonderful Lauren Passarelli who set you will be hearing or maybe have just heard. Um, and I'm grateful to you for wanting to come and spend some time with us. So welcome to my home and, and my piano, and this is where I spend a lot of time. So I want to share some songs with you, especially um, my piano has just been tuned, and I want to share some songs with you, especially at the piano today. The first one is called Moon Ride. I was thinking that every time we attend a concert or give a concert, that it's a sort of invitation to go somewhere. And to go somewhere together, to go somewhere a little different, right? We, we begin in one place and we end in another place. This song is called Moon Ride and it's a kind of invitation to, I guess we could say the cosmic dance. So, Moon Ride. I want to actually 
share with you, when this piano came into my life, it was like a miracle. And I'm, I'm sure many of you who are musicians know exactly what that feels like. It's the answer to your heart's desire. And uh, the very first song I made was the one I'm going to play for you. It's, it's an instrumental song and it's called Dance of the Snow Queen. And uh, if you can imagine while I'm playing, standing in a glade in the middle of the woods as the snow comes down, that sort of fairy tale snow, and seeing this beautiful snow queen dancing in the snow um, and the joy as you're drawn into the dance, another invitation. songs like that or poems that you've made or stories that you tell that feel like that too and there's such a true north for us so I was thinking about that sense of enchantment um, I want to read you a little poem this is just a poem I wrote just a few weeks ago called the snow horse I saw a small horse in the snow made of snow white mane flying tail outstretched one step and shadow further, and it was gone. Many will say, was never there. A few, a very few, will say it was. To these I say, brother, sister, come ride with me. <laughs> oh, fun. Oh, so fun. So, a further invitation for you, my friends. Um, I want to share with you a song I made years ago now when I sort of missed myself. I actually, I have props for this song. I, by chance, came across this, which is a kerchief. Now, back in the old days, in the 1970s, uh, we actually sometimes wore a kerchief over our hair uh, to keep it, you know, from going crazy in the wind. <laughs> and seeing this which brought me right back to myself as a little girl brought me back decades and i began to think about that little girl i was and to remember some things that were important to me um, you'll also hear in the song about my bear your bear this is my bear gordon that my piano teacher gave to me when i was very small and i've had him all these years these things, you know, they connect you. And 
you'll hear in the song, there's a reference to the light in the pine trees. And I grew up in Maine on the Saka River. And I think the light in the pine trees was the thing that probably moved me the most. And when I would see it, it seemed so special and important and truly beautiful. And um, one time I was looking at this light and my mother came out and saw me crying. And she said, for God's sakes, Catherine. And what she really meant, I know now, was I'm afraid that the world will break your heart. You're, you need a thicker skin. Uh, but this song has a reassurance to that younger self that it's all right to be broken open by beauty. There's a part in it, I want to invite you to invite your younger self back as well. There's a part in this song that says, hi, 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 I missed you. Hi, 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 I missed you. And you'll pick it right up. And I just, I hope you'll sing it too. It's easy, you get to hear it twice. So um, just sing it with me. And let's call back those little tender selves that we were, they were lovely. They had a lot of wisdom and they have a lot for us now. So I hope you enjoy this. It's called Little Girl. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
to turn a little bit, I, I'm so interested in poetry. You might know that already. Um, I love poetry, I love writing it, I love reading it, and I really love putting it to music. And the very first poem I put to music, I did so almost accidentally. I was, um, I was young at the time, I was in my 20s, and I was studying Irish studies, um, Celtic studies, and I was reading the poems of William Butler Yeats, and I heard this line in my mind. I went out to the hazel wood because a fire was in my head. And I couldn't help, music flooded in, and I, I made, you'll hear this. Uh, I think this poem is really special, and I think that it is really about us, and I, I, by that I mean you and me and all of us who are interested in music and the arts. It's about inspiration, the fire in the head that stays with us through our lives, from the time we're little girls to the time we're middle-aged girls, <laughs> and probably when we're very old girls, um, or that's my plan anyway. So this is William Butler Yeats's poem, uh, it's called The Song of Wandering Angus, and just very briefly to say who Angus is. Angus is sort of the love god of early Ireland. We have a, a, um, a story about him called Ashling Angus, which means the, the, the vision of Angus. And in this story, a beautiful girl visits him in the night and he falls into a shared league, which means a kind of a love sickness in yearning for her. And it's a beautiful story, and I just want to let you know that they do come together in the end. Yeats um, was drawing on that story for his poem. So here it is, The Song of Wandering Angus. <laughs> Thank you. 
I will find out where she has gone and kiss her lips and take her hands and walk among long dappled grass and pluck till time and times are done. The silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun. The silver apples of the of the sun, the silver apples of the moon, the golden apples of the sun, all of time. Thinking of inspiration, because that is inspiration. I want to read you a little poem about, it's called Inspiration. Um, this is from a little book of poems I made. Uh, it's called Kennings and Littles. The Kennings are like the Anglo-Saxon quick lightning reimaginings of the world. And the Littles are just short poems. Um, little lyrics that I didn't want to make longer and this is one of the littles so it's called inspiration and I'd be interested to know how you experience inspiration just to say briefly a lot of times when I feel inspiration I feel it in the bridge of my nose it's not funny but I actually feel and in my cheekbones but really in the bridge of my nose um, I feel this quickening and this excitement and um, sometimes a kind of disturbance. Anyway, there's lots of images for it here. Inspiration. Sometimes a blaze and sometimes a bolt of pure darkness. Sometimes a sudden hush and sometimes a bout of trembling. Sometimes the gentlest kiss and sometimes a blow. Sometimes the word of heaven sometimes infernal singing, sometimes a speck of nothing, sometimes a glimpse of all, sometimes a welcome guest, sometimes a troubling visitor, sometimes the thunder, and sometimes a bird with a letter furled in his wing. Inspiration. That's, that's us <laughs> being inspired. Well, so I shared with you one poem I put to music. Um, I'm just gonna have this in front of me just on the off chance. This is a poem by Eleanor Wiley. Uh, it's called Valentine. And I don't often get to, to play it. A lot of my shows are sort of Irish themed. Um, and so it's a pleasure to get to share with you some other things. Uh, this poem I think is so powerful. Eleanor in this poem, and it's some, it's somewhere in the 20s, I, th I think it might be 1926, Eleanor Wiley, if you want to look her up. Uh, she's thinking about her heart and what she can do to keep it alive through a lifetime of ups and downs. And at one point she says, and I shall keep it sealed in spice and salt, in a carven silver cup, in a deep vault. But then she turns and says, more or less in your lifetime, you have to come to grips with this beautiful, troubling, wonderful thing that is our heart, the heart. She says, before my eyes are blind, my lips are mute, I must eat core and rind of that same fruit. Before my heart is dust at the end of all, eat it I must, though it were bitter gall but I shall keep it sweet by some strange art. Wild honey shall I eat when I eat my heart. Eleanor Wiley. Too high, too high to pluck, my heart must swing. 
root, no bee shall suck, no wasp shall sting. If on some night of cold it falls to ground, in apple leaves of gold I'll wrap it round, and I shall keep it sealed in spice and Before my eyes are blind, my lips are mute. I must eat core and rind of that same fruit. Before my heart is dust at the end of all, eat it I must, though it were bitter gall. By some strange art Wild honey shall I eat When I eat my heart When I eat my heart Oh That's what we all have to do, don't we? Keep it sweet by some strange art. And in a way, that's what we're, that's what we're doing when we make music or tell stories or sing songs or paint pictures. We're keeping it sweet as much as we can. Well, you know, so poems matter to me. Um, also, I, I've kind of moved now. I'm still putting poems to music, but I've also gotten interested in putting paintings to music. And that's a new um, challenge for me. And I want to share with you the very first of the paintings I've put to music. Here, I hope you can see. This is the painting. Now, it's in a, it, this is a book from an exhibit. Um, Winslow Homer, the wonderful Maine artist, painted this painting. Uh, it's, it's called Hark the Lark, this painting. And I got to see it live and in person, as it were. And I was astonished and mesmerized. And I, I'm, I'm sorry that it's not as clear as it probably could be, but hark the lark. This painting captures the moment when these three young working girls hear the song of the lark and they're transfixed just in that moment. And look at the expressions on their faces. I thought this was so beautiful and important. Again, um, I put it here. Maybe you can hopefully see it there. Uh, so he painted this painting in 1882. And as I said, he was from Maine, but he was in color coats, England. And he met a lot of um, fishing people. And I come from, my father was a fisherman, a lobsterman in Maine. and. Uh, I just felt a kinship with this and also just the idea of being lifted by beauty, which is everything, isn't it? To be lifted by beauty, it's what happens to us. So this is called Hark the Lark. <laughs> Oh, 
We were just walking through the field to put a day in. A day like the day we worked before. We were not talking in the sleepy summer morning. Listening to the waves roll on the shore. Then the heart. It was my sister Rose and my friend Mary Ellen Close as the broom behind the door But when we stopped and raised our eyes to gaze on heaven We were somehow different than before seeing Winslow Homer's beautiful painting. Um, one moment, I do believe, of beauty can change us forever. That's why it felt so important, that, that painting, and also um, just remembering that for our lives. Well, I, you know, I have so many projects, I'm sure <laughs> you do too. Um, let's see, yeah, here we go, just to have this. So another project that I've done over the last few years is I, I wanted to, I have a little mailing list and I wanted to make a present for everybody on my list of a, a blessing song to celebrate the eight holidays in the traditional calendar of Ireland. So if you like to imagine this, you can imagine a sort of wheel and cut it in half. And those are what we call the quarter days. And those would be the big days. So 
La Beltana, which is Beltane, the 1st of, of May, Lunasa, which is the 1st of August, uh, Samhain, which is the 1st of November, and then La Vibrigia, which you've, we've just gone past, which is the 1st of February. And then on, on sort of between those are what you can imagine are the equinoxes and the solstices. And St. Patrick's pretty neatly lines up with the vernal equinox, the spring equinox. Um, St. Patrick is an interesting cat. He is crabby and in all, and we ha actually have sources about him. He's crabby and curmudgeonly, but he's also a dreamer. And this is what I love about him. He uh, followed a dream to come to Ireland. So he dreamt that an angel told him, he had been, when he was young, he had been um, a slave, a, a pig herder apparently in Ireland. And then he escaped back to, to England, sort of Northern England. And uh, he had this dream that he should go back. And so you'll hear this word, a store, which means my darling, come back a store and walk among us again. So this is St. Patrick. Uh, listening to the call of of a dream and it's also because it's a, the vernal equinox it also marks the spring so this one has a little chorus that you might like to sing which is spring comes back and so will I spring comes back and so will we you'll hear it um, so this is St. Patrick's song <laughs>
oh thank you for listening to that and maybe singing with me um just a little 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 poem along that line spring is here is coming my friends it really is coming um, back in january i wrote this little poem watching the squirrels and being inspired by their faith that the spring is coming it's called planning ahead all the january afternoon the squirrel climbs again and again the equivalent height of the Eiffel Tower, carrying in her mouth dry leaves the equivalent mass of a medium duvet. She does not flag, nor complain of the bitter wind that pulls her tail off plum and sets the red pine swaying. No, her entire focus is on the lengthening light on what she is building and her body's intention to fill it with life. I love squirrels. Well, my friends, let's sing one more song together. Here's my little harp. This is my, my darling little heart. And I love to sing this song with anyone who will sing it with me. You'll pick it right up. It's called, What Did the Wind Say? And it comes from my conviction that the world is speaking to us all the time and that there's a lot of encouragement. So you'll hear each time I'll say, what did the wind say? And the chorus is blow. What did the sun say? Shine. What did the flowers say? Bloom. What did the birds say? Now, when I do this song live with people, uh, I wrote it as sing, but I want you to feel very welcome, especially in the privacy of your own home, to make all the bird sounds you want. You can tweet, you can chirp, you can do anything you want. And finally, what did your love say? And that's dear, 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 dear. That's dear to my heart. So thank you very much, Kurt and Eric, for your kind invitation to be part of this. Thank you to Bird Mancini, wonderful Bird Mancini, for putting my name forward for this series. Thank you to the wonderful Lauren Passarelli, whose songs I love so much. And especially, my friends, thank you to you for your presence and your kindness and for singing and for caring about music and for bringing the spring in together. So I hope you'll sing this with me. Here we go. Don't. 
Thank you all so very much.